So one of the caveats to using DMVPN is the fact that our routing protocols need a little bit of manipulation and you've really got to understand how they work. So with our DMVPN cloud, we've got spoke A, spoke B in the hub. And then what we're going to have to do to make EIGRP work correctly is work on the next hop self uh, attribute. Now next hop self is something that we typically know from BGP. Remember with BGP, you've got two different types of neighbors, IBGP neighbors and EBGP neighbors. So this is our DMVPN conversation on the left. This is our BGP conversation on the right. Just try to keep them clear. Within BGP, we've got these autonomous systems, which are just collections of different routers. Whenever you make advertisements between autonomous systems, these relationships are called eBGP. And then when those eBGP announcements are passed within your AS, like let's say that this is level three, let's say that this is global crossing, let's say that this is Verizon. Um, you know, when Verizon advertises something to global crossing, they set the next hop to their public interface on the outside. Does that make sense? And then when global crossing advertises it to level three, they update the next top. So the moral of the story is in BGP, next top is updated between eBGP neighbors, but not IBGP neighbors. So what does that really mean? Well, if you're inside of Verizon, and you receive an update that says some network is reachable. And I'm just going to change pens here so it's a little bit easier to see. And you know, you're a BGP router, maybe this is where you're at. Someone sends you an update and it says the 7000/8 network is reachable at this public IP address over here. And it's the public interface that we peer with at Global Crossing. What happens there is BGP does something, uh, it's just a bit of a sanity check, where he goes, I don't want to look like a jerk. So if somebody says, hey, you can get to the seven network by going to this next top, before I install it in my routing table, I qualify it. And the way that you qualify it is you make sure that the next top is reachable. That makes sense, right? You go, well, before I stick this in my routing table, make sure I can get to the next top. Now, the funny part about it is that the next top has to be reachable by something other than a default route. So if you're pulling you know, partial tables, you're doing something where you're not getting full visibility, um, or maybe that link between, in this case, Verizon and Global Crossing, um, if that link isn't advertised, let's say through an IGP or even through BGP, you know, if, if you don't know how to get to that particular path, you don't install the route. So what you can do, coming back to you know, the next hop rule, next hop is updated between eBGP neighbors, but it's left alone between IBGP neighbors. So it's kind of like if you were coming to Tampa, Florida and you want to see the Buccaneers lose a game, I'd say no problem, my buddy Jim, he's a big Bucks fan even though they're not, they're not very good and he's always got Bucks tickets. If you need Bucks tickets, talk to Jim. That didn't do you any good because you don't know Jim. So I could say, hey, if you need Bucks tickets, come talk to me. Do I have them? No, but I know the guy. That's all that Next Top Self does. When people give you information, you uh, replicate that data as though it's coming from you. And it fixes that disconnect between how do I get to the next top. Does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. <laughs> cool. So here's a trick. A lot of people know that about BGP, but they didn't know that about EIGRP. EIGRP does next top self but we don't want it to. This is why we've got to understand that to do DMVPN. You see, the way that it works is some network, let's say 10.1.1.0, is going to be advertised from A up to the hub. With DMVPN, sure, we can do spoke-to-spoke -spoke shortcut switching. We can build that dynamic path between A and B, but we don't do it until we need it. The, tr the thing that we have to do is modify EIGRP's operation on the hub, and we've got to tell him no next hop self. See what happens when 1011 comes in, it's going to be tethered 
to our tunnel interface, right? So when A tells the hub, hey, I've got the 1011 network over here, come to my tunnel zero to get there, he goes, great. And if he was to advertise this back out to B, we'd have to make sure Split Horizon was disabled so he can send that back out, that MGRE interface. But when we send that advertisement back out, what EIGRP would normally do is say, hey, if you want to get to 10110, come talk to me. Do you see why we would want to disable that? We would want to leave this as the original source. If you don't do that, there's no reason for B to perform the NHRP lookup for, and he's, he's asking, how do I get to? And let's say that this tunnel interface is, you know, 172, 16, 1, 2. That's what he would have to resolve to want to go to his public IP address. Does that make sense? So that's just EIGRP's next top self. Sorry that it's a little blurry. <laughs> <laughs> I talk fast, I draw quickly. Um, I should probably spend less time on routing protocols and a little bit time mastering my ability to draw circles, but cool. Hope that one.